In today's episode of the podcast, we're going to be talking about IDD therapy and disc herniations, how things like this can help you recover from yours. And it's first off, the best place to start is talking about the most common root cause of lower back pain. And really, disc injuries to the L45 and L5S1 segments of your lumbar spine and the discs at those junctions are really the most common root cause. Uh, whether it's sciatica, whether it's spinal stenosis, whether it's muscle spasm or any variety of different symptoms that you might experience, their origin, their root cause comes from this section of the lumbar spine. And having a means to actually work on the root cause rather than running around chasing after symptoms is what IDD therapy and other approaches like this are really all about. It's about targeting the cause rather than getting caught up fighting fires where the symptoms are. And hopefully in today's episode, you're going to understand how we can blend blend things like IDD therapy with the proper rehabilitative work to really make you look at your back pain with a different light, with maybe a renewed confidence that actually you can resolve this issue and start to move on to having quote unquote no pain or being pain free and just getting on that pathway to feeling a hell of a lot better reasonably swiftly. When you start putting the right pieces in place, it really can turn around in a remarkably fast uh, time frame, as we've seen time and time again with both patients and members over the years. And I thought the best place to start is just identifying a few little bits about sciatica and back pain. The simple truth is either members to the program or whether it's patients in the clinics over the years, they don't come to us first. We know that Nine times out of 10, you've had many different other therapies that haven't worked. You've tried lots of different treatments or different exercises and stretches, and you haven't really found relief. It may, might have been um, like a, a recent um, poll of our members. This is quite a few members here um, gi giving us feedback. And it was, I think, about 40% of the members in the program had tried injections or surgery before starting the program. Most of our experience has been working with people that haven't just injured their back pain yesterday. And probably chances are, if you're watching this video, even considering something like IDD therapy, you didn't just injure your back yesterday. You've tried a bunch of things and it hasn't worked. And maybe you've been looking at, okay, what can I do to avoid surgery? And you're going down the IDD therapy route. To be completely frank, it would have been better if we'd have done this way back when, but the way in which things are, especially here in the UK, it's often that things are ignored or not dealt with as a disc injury until you finally do end up getting that MRI and find out, well, we probably had it way back when, and we could have treated it earlier. That aside, understand that you have been living through life, maybe with the existence of, or with the assistance of painkillers, et cetera, to do all the things that you're doing every day. In spite of the pain, we've been doing lots of things. And that is very, very important for you to have in the back of your mind. What have you been doing whilst you've been suffering with back pain? Irrespective of how bad it might have been or the sciatica that you might have had, have you been still going to work? Have you been struggling around the house? Have you been still looking after the kids or the grandkids in spite of the fact that we have this bad back pain? We have maybe this MRI diagnosis or x-ray. And just remember that as we're going forwards from here, talking about sort of the, the first step, which is going to be prepping your back to get started with something like IDD therapy. And the most important thing that you can do to help start your results from day one is going to be starting your treatment before or starting your exercise work before or in tandem with those early sessions of IDD therapy. And the reason you should start this is, as I just mentioned, you're already doing many different things every single day. And this means that you need to be engaging your core more correctly. You need to be learning to move more correctly. And it doesn't matter what treatment you're having. Whether you're having conventional chiropractic, osteopathy, physiotherapy, whether you're doing exercises at home or stretches at home or other sorts of therapies, or whether you're the other end of the spectrum, you, you're having a lumbar decompression surgery, you're having injections for the lower back, you're having radiofrequency ablation, whatever the different treatment may or may not be, whether it's regenerative on the side of stem cells and PRP, or whether it's sort of more traditional steroid injections, et cetera, whatever it is, you are still going to have to walk to the clinic, walk out of the clinic, or post-surgery, get in the car, go home, you're still going to have to live with you. So there is no scenario at all, please understand this, because it holds so many people back, that you should not be doing exercises immediately to start to make those things safer. Think about it like this. It's much, much better you make some mistakes at home, learning to engage these, engage these, uh, the core correctly or move correctly before you go and have some element of treatment, then you wait and have the treatment and then start learning and making all the mistakes that are inevitable when we're learning something in terms of exercises after you've had the treatment. So please use this as a bit of confidence. You might not feel 100% confident doing it. And if not, then reach out to your practitioner, get a bit of guidance. Or if you're one of our members, you can always reach out to us and we'll help give you that little bit of guidance and feedback to start doing some of the right things to support that recovery process. So you can get some of the early mistakes out the way as you're moving forwards with treatment. So that's the first thing. Get your exercises, get a bit of confidence, stabilizing your core, 
starting to learn how to do that, which might be difficult, and learn some of the other simple movements. Now, we talk at great length within the program and also in the free Back and Shake Masterclass, which you can click a link somewhere underneath this video uh, to, 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 to go and have a look at that, where we break down some of these simple exercises. So I won't go through the details here, but you can always check that out after this particular video um, on the website and on the YouTube channel. Step number two is actually having the IDD therapy. What is it actually doing in your back? How is it working? And how can we maybe compare and contrast this to something like lumbar decompression surgery? And the simple truth is that what IDD decompression is doing is imagine your little discs are like little water balloons and, and when they're squashed and damaged they've squashed down and the, the balloon bulges out to the side it goes fat okay and what we're doing when we're on the table is we're stretching the balloon again making it skinny again and that's why some of you when you have pretty severe and acute disc injuries some people will literally notice as they're on the table the pain literally goes away as the decompression starts to pull some of the pressure off that disc it starts to uh, eliminate the sciatic symptoms down the leg or the lower back pain now Granted, we have to put you back together again afterwards, but some of the benefits uh, that you get after the treatment is that while you're actually on the table, it's creating this pumping effect to get nutrition back into that disc to help with the recovery and healing process. And what you find with successive sessions on the IDD uh, therapy, doing that spinal decompression, is that that healing process takes place. So each time you put that those discs or the weight back on those discs after a treatment in the safest possible way, as the table kind of comes up at the end of the treatment, um, it's nice and slowly, is that your discs are stronger. They're more able to bear that load as we put the spine back together again because they've done healing since the last session. If you've been doing your rehab work as well, they've been getting stronger since the last session as well. That's really, really important. Now, if we compare that to something like spinal decompression surgery, it's not working to help improve the healing of the segment. It's it's done. And sometimes it's done in, under emergency circumstances and it just has to be done. That's the way it is. But it's done to just remove a bit of the disc. And remember, those discs are spaces. So we think about conditions like spinal stenosis, where the holes are starting to get smaller, where the nerves come out. And that's a secondary condition. Spinal stenosis is not the primary diagnosis. It's a result of the disc spaces getting smaller and or bony spurs appearing as a result of that. And, and, and therefore that decreases the capacity for inflammation to build up in that area before it starts to irritate the nerves and give you pain. But it is the disc injury that's, that, that's, that's the primary issue, like we mentioned at the start of the episode. So when we're doing the decompression and removing those spaces from a decompression surgery point of view, we can just keep taking bits of disc out, but is that necessarily the best way? Whereas if we can do something under ideal circumstances to help those discs go through that uh, recovery process, and we're reinforcing that, as I'll get onto a little bit later, at home as well, we're going to start to help that disc go through its natural healing process. And all of your discs, no matter where they are and how long you've had them injured, they are trying to heal every day. And that's why those exercises are so important that you start to learn those things, because often it is the barriers that you are putting up outside of the treatment room in those 168 hours every week, whether you're having treatment once, twice, three times a week, whatever it may be, once a fortnight, etc., you're doing a bunch of things every single week in those 168 hours that is undermining that healing process and preventing it taking place. So we have to have the approach of in the clinic, but also outside. And that goes for any treatment that you might or might not be doing. So that's really important. Then we get into step number three, which is doing the rehab plus your spinal decompression. And we've got two strategies for you here that'll really help you. And again, there's more information on that masterclass that I referenced earlier on, link in the description, and then obviously in the program as well, where we help you guys do this. But first strategy is after you're having treatments, in between treatments, and on those days at home, doing some element of at-home spinal decompression to help reinforce what's being done. Granted, it's not going to be anywhere near as good as the decompression that you're getting on the IDD therapy table, but it's, it helps. It helps you replicate that at home in a safe way. And we do this in two ways. We've got the towel decompression exercise that we talk about, which is supporting the natural curve, the natural backward bending in the lumbar spine. So many people who, need, who end up using things like IDD therapy, need help with their disc injuries, have a flat and lumbar spine because they've done the wrong exercises. More on that a little bit later. But this towel decompression can take a little bit of pressure off those discs because every single day, you will probably experience this anyway, the simple, simple load of gravity is enough to cause your back to become problematic. A short walk becomes leads to too many impacts that starts to aggravate those discs again. So having a remedy at home that you can do to reinforce that recovery process in between sessions can be really, really helpful. Another strategy is the bed decompression. Again, there'll be a link in the description where we've got a uh, three, I think it's three, 
um, decompression stretches that you can do at home. So check that out afterwards if you want to see those and how to do them step by step. And there's also a fourth one, which is using a towel to mobilize the spine in a safe way. Again, helping decompress the spine. And you can check that out in the same video. I would say in that video, the third stretch, the, ch the chair stretch, isn't going to be quite as easy for some of you with a lot of pain. But hey, have a look at the video, see what you think of it. And maybe those are ones that you can incorporate regularly through the day to take pressure off those discs in your lower back. And this can be combined with something like contrast therapy. Again, we've got a video to help you do this effectively, a step-by-step -step guide to contrast therapy for lower back pain. And that again will be a link in the description, but you can lean on that to also help manage excess inflammation. If you're someone with a severe disc bulge or herniation, and there's gonna be a degree of spinal stenosis, or you've got degenerative disc disease, and there's a degree of spinal stenosis that's been identified in your lower back, you're going to find that your back struggles when excess inflammation builds up from those little aggravations from daily basis, or that happen from daily activities, sorry. And so using something like contrast therapy alongside the decompression in between sessions is going to help give you an opportunity to do something in between those sessions to reinforce the positive effect or the positive therapeutic effect that something like IDD therapy has on your lower back. So using those is going to be really important. Then we get to strategy number two, which is equally important. And that is starting to develop core strength. And often people go to things like Pilates or yoga, et cetera, et cetera, to try and strengthen up the core. But core strength, as we've discussed in other videos, is not just about the core muscles. It's about the spine strength as well. And we'll talk, touch on this a little bit later still. But building up the strength in movements like the squat, movement like the, movements like the hip hinge and the split squat, et cetera, reverse lunge to help you build stability back into that spine. And more importantly, in the early days when you're maybe having slightly more frequent treatments, learn how to do them correctly. Because going back to what we mentioned near the start of this video, this podcast episode, you must learn to move correctly. You're doing what we call uh, getting out of a chair. You're doing what we call brushing your teeth. And we do what we call going up the stairs or a step every single day. These are the squat, the hip hinge, and they are the lunge or the reverse lunge. You're doing those every day, regardless, as I said at the start, of whether you're on your way to have surgery or you've just got home from surgery, you are doing this every day and you're probably doing them poorly and that's probably why your lower back has an issue that is not resolving. And therefore learning to do these as correctly as possible immediately is of vital importance. Because even if you're, say, coming here to have IDD therapy downstairs on the table, you're gonna be sat in the waiting room or you've been sat in the car on the way to get here and you will do the same on the way back, whether it's here on, ID, on the IDD therapy, therapy machine, whether it's with your local clinic or whether it's sitting in the waiting room of the surgery or sitting, sitting down after you've just had a spinal decompression surgery. It doesn't matter. You're still gonna do those movements. So you must learn to do those correctly because that means that even though your strength might, might not improve immediately, you will find that your competence at those movements, your awareness of those movements starts to have significant positive impacts on your daily life. And that is going to help the therapies that we're having, whatever they are, have a more positive and compounding effect over the subsequent weeks and months as your body goes through the proper healing process. And that brings me to the all important avoid exercises before we get onto the final step. And so commonly you will see people diagnosed or not or diagnosed with disc injuries having certain treatments, whatever they are, surgical or non-surgical. And they're given exercises like the child's pose, the pelvic tuck, the cat cow camel, and those sorts of rounding the back exercises. You must eliminate those without negotiation. We find that more or less all, and we, we used to do this thing with the, with the members when they would join, we'd have a little questionnaire. And one of the questions was, are you bed bound or are you moving and uh, moving around the house? And I would say over the, what, must have been 10,000 plus, more than that, of feedback forms that we'd had of those, more or less everybody, 99% plus, are doing stuff every day, which means you're more than likely putting pressure through your spine, you're more than likely sitting down for extended periods. The British Heart Foundation quoted that we've quoted many times before, 95% of adults are sitting down every day. You do not need more flexion through your lumbar spine. It is just not something that needs to be done. And we have to understand that those disc fibers, as you squash them down and the balloon bulges out, the fibers stretch. They stretch under the load of this, your spine. And our job to help your discs heal and your job to help them heal is to build the strength of those ligaments, which are make up the annulus fibrosis, which is the outer part of the disc that holds the gel in place. And the simple load of your spine in most cases early on, as I mentioned earlier, when you finish on the table, we have to put you back together again. 
or whatever treatment you have, you have to then put load back on. Even that, the stretch that comes from just putting the load on your spine is enough to cause aggravation of those tissues. And therefore doing movements like the knee hugs, etc., that stretch those even more aggressively through a full mo movement is just not appropriate when we're trying to go through a healing and strengthening process. We need those ligaments to tighten back up again so they can provide stability and integrity. And that's what happens when you start to find that you're feeling better and better after you have the decompression. And when you get off the table, it feels great. That's because those discs are strong enough to bear that load again in the instant that you put load back onto the spine. They might not be strong enough just yet to carry X, Y, Z, you know, carry the suitcase, this, that, the other, but they're strong enough to have the decompression on the ID table, ID therapy table, and then put you back up and be okay. And so we don't need to add more of those incorrect exercises because they don't have a place. We've already discussed the exercises that do have a place. And that's what we'll get onto now. So avoid those exercises at all costs and make sure you're doing the right ones instead, building a strong, ability for you to maintain a neutral spine with strong core muscles and then building the strong core in its in its entirety. Because really going forwards into step four, you should be leaning on your IDD therapy to help you strengthen the discs in your lower back and the surrounding structures. And that comes from the correct rehabilitation exercises at the correct time. And what we're doing here is we're recognizing that there are two parts to healing. And one of the reasons perhaps that you've been stuck in a cycle over the years of not healing the back effectively and finding things come back is because you are not adhering to the second part of healing that takes place. The first part is that the body patches things up and it's, the pain starts to go away. And this is a classic case with lower back uh, pain patients and, and disc injuries is that the pain goes away. So you see so the motivation to do your exercise that you were doing goes away also. And then you start doing things because the back, back isn't strong, strong enough that aggravate the disc and then you re-injure it. And generally speaking, the re-injuries and the re-aggravations tend to get worse over time and longer to recover from. And that's a pattern that we see time and time again in both patients and members. So we've got to break that cycle. And that comes from adhering to the second part of healing, which is the healing and remodeling process. And this is where you are incorporating those exercises that I mentioned earlier on, that we talk about in the masterclass, that we talk about in the program, and that we insist all patients are doing if they're coming here for IDD therapy because ultimately we want to get long-term results. We don't just want it to be a quick fix. We want it to actually last and you must do the work at home. Otherwise, what's the point in any of this? The, the expectation that you can live with, with, with you and not, do, not have any role in the treatment and recovery process is false. You have to be involved in that because like I said earlier, you're living with you 168 hours a week and how you take care of your body makes a huge difference on why the back pain is there in the first place and why it won't be there in the future if we do things right. And therefore it comes, we must be adding carefully load to our spine as those discs go through a healing process, adding a degree of load carefully with a neutral spine with control to start to give the guidance to that section of the spine and the bones and the joints and the hips and the muscles that they must get stronger than they currently are. And in the presence of adequate nutrition, which we talk about in other episodes of the podcast, in the presence of adequate recovery, et cetera, between those hard sessions and with the assistance in some cases of having your maybe your slightly less frequent IDD therapy sessions, your body is going to continue to go through this remodeling process because really healing and remodeling never stops. It never stops in the healthy individual. You're maybe stronger one year than you were the previous because you have trained yourself to become stronger. For many, unfortunately, with back pain, we're very much weaker than we need to be. And it's through that remodeling process, carefully, consistently, over the months and years ahead, that you will keep the back pain away. Because ultimately, it's not about getting rid of back pain per se. Yes, that is the biggest thing that's motivating us but it's getting rid of back pain so we can do the things that we currently can't do. So we can actually go to work and be productive because we're not thinking about our back all the time. So we can actually get down to the floor and play with our kids or grandkids, how, whatever the case may be, without worrying about whether you're gonna get up or end up back in wherever it was before, A and E, you know, struggling with back pain. So it's, it's, a, it's getting rid of this back pain so we can do those things that's so important. So I'll close today's episode with just kind of an endorsement. Um, we here really do think that IDD is a really great tool. We use it in conjunction with some of the other therapies like class four laser, because it's one of the very few non-invasive treatments that it can actually do something to the bit that is injured and help you in that recovery process. Other treatments just don't cut it. They don't, they're not able to interface with the area that's actually injured in the same sort of way. So that's what we do here and, and help you guys with the right sort of rehabilitation work that you must be doing at home to go through that process safely and, and effectively 
to really rebuild and recover from these disc injuries. And we've seen countless people do it over and over again with these sorts of, uh, these sorts of injuries. And unfortunately, who've been struggling before they come to us for a long period of time. And we're talking about months to years. Some people come in and say, I've had this for so long, I can't bear it. It's been four months. Some people say, I've had this for long, I can't bear it. It's been a year. And other people say the same thing, and it's been 20 years. And however long it is for you is the longest it's been for you. And it's important that we can start to make real changes. And we don't necessarily need to rely on other things that maybe have downsides to them. And the final thing I would say is, let's say you can't come here to see us, I've got no problem recommending you go and see someone close to you who can give, deliver IDD therapy. They can help you with that. And the program and the guidance that we have online on the program, on the website, on the YouTube channel, etc., can help you make sure that you're doing the right sort of rehab at home to complement that process, to mean that with each passing session that you have from an IDD therapy point of view, your body is getting stronger and it's also getting stronger and safer and more um, more effectively going through a healing process at home between those sessions too. And you'll find that gives you a much better lasting result, lasting solution. Hopefully this episode has been helpful for you. You found it interesting. It's maybe addressed some of the concerns, thoughts, comments you might've had about IDD therapy. If you are interested in specifically how we use it here in the clinic, um, downstairs to, to, to help your specific back pain. There's a nice video on the Back and Shape Studio website um, of just you know going through a little bit about IDD therapy and, and demonstrating things. You've probably seen some of the, the snapshots in this episode of the podcast as well if you're watching. But as always, if you've got any comments or questions, post those in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you and we're happy to guide you in any particular way that you need. And uh, thanks for watching this far. We'll see you in the next episode of the podcast or next video, whichever one comes first.